Monsieur Mr. President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are meeting today in Paris, France, where human creativity and genius have always thrived. It is here in Paris in 1805 that the mechanical telegraph was used for the first time. In the 1970s, the Minitel, a French invention, heralded the early days of the Internet. Thanks to his datagram, Louis Poussin made a packet switching and subsequently the Internet possible. It is here in France that the foundations uh, were laid, or many of the foundations, for the digital era. President Macron has followed this rich tradition and set out new paths. I would like to thank him for hosting us today, and in particular uh, for bringing together in an unprecedented way history, technology, and philosophy. It is only if we know history that we can project ourselves into the future. The time has come to think over the ways and means of putting technologies and their uh, fantastic uh, emancipatory power to the service of the fundamental values of humanity. The National Dialogue opening in France will take up decisive questions for our digital future in the, in the, in the Parisian cafes and lecture halls. Philosophers and writers have been thinking over the impact of technology on the human condition for centuries. This quest for wisdom and for innovation uh, is what has brought us to UNESCO today, which has been kind and generous enough to invite us, and whose walls resound every day with the debates on ethics, artificial intelligence, and uh, digital knowledge. We'd like to uh, thank you for your initiative on ethics and artificial intelligence. It is here, at the uh, junction between the past and the future, that the 13th Forum on Internet Governance is opening. Thank you. The IGF has made a long journey since the World Summit on the Information Society in 2005 in Tunisia. At the time, Facebook was welcoming its first followers and the first tweet had not yet been sent. In 13 short years, the digital world has changed profoundly. New pathways of opportunity have opened. Digital solutions are transforming lives and can turbocharge our work to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. But alongside the tremendous benefits that it can bring, new issues have emerged around cybersecurity, data and artificial intelligence. We see the Internet being used as a platform for hate speech, for repression, censorship and control. We need look no further than the headlines to see how the Internet and social media can be used to divide and even radicalize people, feeding distrust, reinforcing tribalism, and breeding hatred. Over time, new fora have established to, were established to discuss these and other issues, and the IHF, IGF must consider how it will adapt. Today, one of our most important questions is how do we keep the IGF relevant? The good news is that France, this year's host, and Germany, next year's host, are investing a lot of time, energy, and planning into the IGF. And I'm particularly pleased to learn that the UN high-level panel on digital cooperation, which I launched in July, is working closely with the IGF. These discussions will reflect on the ways that digital cooperation can be improved. As you discuss how to enhance the relevance of the IGF, I would like to make a few suggestions that I've also proposed to the I-Level panel. First, we must be more than multi-stakeholder. We must also be multidisciplinary. Cooperation among actors in the digital space has not kept pace with new technologies. Digital technologies are transversal, yet discussions are still siloed. For example, data is addressed across policy spaces from technology, economic, human rights, standardization, and jurisdiction viewpoints. The more silos there are, the higher is the risk for conflicting and suboptimal policies for industries, for governments, and for users. 
When you discuss data and artificial intelligence, you might want to invite philosophers to consider ethics. You might want to bring in anthropologists and other specialists who are not typically included in technological gatherings. When you discuss social media, you need to include political and social scientists. We need the wide range of expertise, experience and ideas to strike the right policy balances. For example, to find the right interplay between protection of privacy and security. Second, we need to create shared language and references. I ask you, as I ask the panel, to inspire new thinking and language on digital cooperation. Create shared references, propose new approaches, and look for possible ways to reframe existing problems, be them in trade, security, or human rights. We, meet, we need to make sure that the most competent fora are dealing with the most consequential questions and that they can benefit from cross-cutting resources. The answers to these questions should wave stories of digital cooperation from around the world into a global narrative. Third, you will need a dedicated effort to include and amplify the weak and the missing voices. A great strength of the IGF is its multi-stakeholder approach, but I urge your digital discussions to move beyond the so-called usual suspects. Digital growth affects everyone, and traditionally unheard and marginalized voices should be more visibly involved in the IGF's work. Reach out to local communities that have many fascinating stories and insights on leveraging digital technology for business and inclusion. Get stories from people with disabilities who are among the most creative users of digital technology. And spare no effort to bring in the voices of women who have been underrepresented both at the design and end use level and subject to deep gender gaps in access to digital technologies. Actively seek out networks of the elderly who are increasingly active users of digital and robotics technology. For youth, the digital econ economy is transforming the labor market, creating new jobs while simultaneously destroying old ones. How do we support a culture and education system that encourages lifelong learning? And do not forget that more than half of the world's population still does not have meaningful access to the Internet. How can the IGF help to bridge this digital divide both between and within countries? I encourage you to reach out to governments, in particular from developing countries. Let us listen to their concerns and their ideas on how the IGF can be more important and productive for them. Do they suggest a more discussion on Internet public policy issues? Or can the IGF provide help to governments and the private sector in dealing with pressing issues on data, security and infrastructure? Lastly, and most importantly, we need to make sure that these discussions and this forum, fora have greater impact. New technologies are transforming every aspect of our lives. Our understanding of the transformations and the disruption they cause is inadequate. Technology should empower, not overpower us. And as with past transformative inventions, we need to set policies that contain unintended consequences or malicious use. Discussions on Internet governance cannot just remain discussions. Policy and where relevant normative frameworks must be developed to ensure impact. We cannot leave our fate in the digital era to the invisible end of market forces. But classical forms of regulation do not apply to many of these new generation of challenges. Non-traditional, multilateral and multi-stakeholder cooperation will be crucial, including governments, the private sector, research centers and civil society. And the IGF needs to reflect on how it can have greater impact in Internet governance. Over the next three days, I encourage you to focus especially on innovative solutions that can increase trust on the Internet. There are many digital risks, but some of them could be turned into digital opportunities. You have the support of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs and from a wide community of
regional and national IGFs. You also have support from your multi-stakeholder advisory group. I want to congratulate you on having full gender parity on the mark this year and for the diverse age and geographic representation you have been able to achieve. The World Summit on the Information Society provisions that established the IGF provide us with enough space to improve current mechanisms. It is important to gather and consider the proposals that have been advanced about strengthening the IGF. In addition, discussions with the high-level panel on digital cooperation can generate new ideas, make the most of this unique opportunity. When it comes to governance, we must be as creative, as bold as those who first built the Internet. You can count on my support in this journey towards a prosperous, safe and fair digital future. And most of all, know that you are making a difference. And I wish you a very successful Internet Governance Forum. Thank you very much.